we're making some whiskey. Hello and welcome back to another Beaver Brew Day. Today, as you can see, the big blue tub is out or green tub is out and that means we are doing an all grain wash or a wart. So yeah, let's get into it. First up, let's check out what we are going to be using for the ingredients. For the sauce of amylase, malted sorghum. Our first starch sauce, some cornflakes. For our third and final source of starch, we are using three types of malted wheat. First up, because we are using predominantly malted product, meaning our sorghum is pre-malted, three, kilogram, three, three kilograms of malted sorghum. I'm using the King Corn brand. We are also using three kilograms of malted wheat one of them I used the method bearded and board used to malt his grain and turn it into a speciality grain to create some crystal malt. So this is malted wheat crystal malt, one kilogram of that. Then what I have here is pale, one kilogram of pale wheat malt and another one kilogram of pale wheat malt that we will be smoking. So let's get into the smoking while we prepare the rest of our grains. So what we're going to be using to smoke our grains is some Siakobos. So it's a wood we use in South Africa to braai with. So for our smoker we are going to be using a rudimentary type of smoker. We're just going to use a fire chamber or a smoke chamber and another chamber that's going to carry the grain. One coffee can has a whole bunch of holes drilled in the bottom of it. The other one is just going to contain the wood chips. While this grain is smoking and getting nice smoke infused flavor into it it's time to grind up the rest of our grains and get it ready to mash in yes i do not have a grain mold so i use a blender is it the ideal way to do it not at all it does not grind up all the grain some of the grain gets too fine but for now all i have and it works will we get optimum yield probably not but it works grind this up I just want to say something about the flavor it tastes exactly like Pro Vita now if you don't know what Pro Vita is it's a little grain biscuit yeah wondering what kind of flavors this is going to import into the final spirit but yeah looking forward to that The grain has a nice deep rich smoky smell, not too overpowering, it just started teetering on that nice and sweet smoke. What we're going to do now is get it all ground up. the grain 
one prepared that is three kilograms of corn flakes, three kilograms of malted wheat, and three kilograms of malted sorghum, bringing us to nine kilograms of grain in total. Why so much grain? We're going to overspodge this same as I did with the bourbon to get as much sugary water out as possible so we can increase our yield from the grains that we're using. Did I have to grind up the corn flakes? No, I did not have to grind the corn flakes, but it does make it easier for the enzymes to access the starches once you grind them up. And because the corn flakes are pre-gelatinized to make them edible and not hard as a rock when you add malt, we do not need to boil any of this. So we can go straight into the mash. So our mash turn, as same as last time, is a old cooler box. And what we're gonna do now is we are going to add some hot water into here, get it to our strike temperature. If you want to know more about strike temperatures and that type of stuff, check out one of my other old rain videos where I explain the whole process of getting the strike temperature right. We are going to do something different with the malted sorghum. We are going to start at 64 degrees and we're going to leave it there for 30 minutes. Once that 60, once we are done with the 64 degrees, we are going to raise the temperature up by adding some more hot water into here to about 70, 72 degrees. And that will activate the alpha amylase in the malted sorghum. From the research I've done with the sorghum, malted sorghum, they tend to like higher temperatures. So let's start the process. First up, some hot water. After that, we're gonna add some cold water to get it to our strike temperature. So we're ready at strike temperature. As you can see the steam coming off here, it's time to start adding our grain to the water. So I'm gonna start with my smoked grain first. Remember, keep mixing as you're adding. You don't want any dough balls. A dough ball is just where your grain is wet on the outside and dry on the inside and that means that you will be not utilizing all your grain. So get a nice big spoon in a bob and just make sure you mix everything up as you add it. So with 30 minutes past, it's time to add some more hot water to the mash to ensure we get that temperature up. Reason why we're doing it in a two-stage process is malted sorghum, uh, from what I've researched so far, likes a higher mash temp. So just to ensure that we get it both your normal mash temp of 64 degrees and the higher temp that the sorghum likes, we're just going to raise the temperature by adding some more hot water to it and then leaving it for another hour at the higher temperature. So uh, we've covered the beta and the alpha amylase and we'll just see if we can get a better conversion out of it. Better than we did last time when we did the Unkumbuti whiskey. Let's uh, crack the lid on this bad boy and add some more hot water. Okay, so as we see we started to get the amylase working. We have that nice clear liquid on top but there is still some starches left over. So what we're gonna do now is bump the temperature up and get the rest of the amylase working. Sitting nice and pretty at 70 degrees, it's now time to cap it up again and let the alpha amylase go to work. So with an hour now past, it's time to crack the lid on this bad boy and start making a massive mess in sparging. So yeah, hopefully I've got a solution, or I thought of a solution, to make it easier. 
as always remember to uh, sanitize everything before you go ahead and uh, get your liquid in there just make sure there's no buggies in there before I open the tap at the bottom we're gonna open the lid up and see if we got that conversion that we wanted so from the look of things uh, it converted quite nicely so all the top here is just nice and liquidy no more thick starchy soup let's get sparging brewing the bag whiskey but compared to last time this is a piece of cake process was easier but having a look at the floor around me and myself I sure as hell made a lot less of a mess we ended up with two buckets full of uh, wort just tested the hydrometer reading it is currently sitting on a 1.035 to correct that with the temperature, the wash is currently sitting at about 50 degrees centigrade. That should give us a correction to about a 1.42 or a 1.45. So uh, both of these buckets will average out on about a 6% ABV. I'm pretty happy for a recipe that was supposed to be only for 20 liters and we overspotted it to 40. This should give us quite a nice run once it's done. Up next, these two bad boys need to cool down to a temperature where it is acceptable to pitch the yeast. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dunk both of these into a nice ice cold bath, leave them there for a couple of hours, and then uh, we're even till tomorrow morning. And when they're cold, we'll just pitch the yeast. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick reading. see where we at so we are sitting on uh, 0 0.40 which will give us roughly 7% ABV in both of these so uh, I think we had a good and successful conversion and a sparge time to pitch the yeast uh, the yeast we'll be using today is the NCP super brew high foam yeast now this yeast is commonly used in South Africa for that malted sorghum beer, the kombuti beer that they make here in South Africa and it is specifically designed to chew through maltose and that's the kind of stuff we have in here. So with the lids back on, it's now time to put these babies to rest. Luckily for this yeast, it does not like high temperatures. So we are currently in summer, so no temperature control needed. And these babies should ferment out in a couple of days. For everybody sticking around to the end, thank you very much again for watching. And as always, have a lucky day.